morning to all. Good morning to all, and I would like to welcome everyone to our meeting today. I would like to also indicate that this August 10th Council meeting is being held electronically as per bylaw number 37-2021, section 3.10, which allows for electronic participation of council meetings. Welcome to all members of council and all staff that are in attendance today that will give us facts and information so that we can make the best decisions on behalf of all residents in our municipality. And welcome to all members of the public that are also in attendance this morning. Do any members, and I would like to indicate of course that this meeting will be uh, uh, recorded uh, for the purposes of minutes. Uh, do any members of council have any pecuniary interest that they would like to indicate at this time of any agenda item this morning? Seeing none, uh, we have a, a few sets of minutes to adopt and we'll start with the July 13th council meeting minutes. A mover and a seconder, please. And that would be Councillor Miltonberg moves, seconded by Councillor Forrester, that Ashfield, Colburn, Walwanosh Township Council hereby adopts the July 13th, 2021 council meeting minutes as written. Are there any questions on these minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried, I thank you. And for the July 26th council meeting minutes, a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Snowblin moves, Councillor Fisher seconds, that Ashfield Colburn Wallanosh Township Council adopts the July 26th, 2021 council meeting minutes as written. Are there any questions on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried, I thank you. And now for the August 3rd council uh, meeting minutes, a mover and a seconder, please. Deputy Mayor Watt moves, seconded by Councillor Van Stone, that Ashfield, Colburn, Awawanosh Township Council adopts the August 3rd, 2021 council meeting minutes as written. Are there any questions on these minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion. And that again is carried, I thank you all for that. Open forum is an opportunity for any members of the public to make any comments or state their opinion on any agenda item that we have this morning. Caitlin, are you aware, is there anyone that would like to speak at this time for open forum? And please use the raised hand function if you would like to be recognized by Caitlin. Uh, there's no no one indicated at this time they'd like to speak. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Uh, on delegations this morning, we would like to welcome Selena Whaling Ray, our county planner for ACW. Welcome, Selena. And this is dealing with zoning bylaw application amendment file Z09 21 of Kimberly and Montgomery Prior. I would entertain a mover and a seconder to adjourn our council meeting, please. Moved by Councillor Forrester, seconded by Deputy Mayor Watt, that Ashfield Colburn Wawanosh Township Council hereby adjourns a regular council meeting. All in favor of that motion. And that is carried. Thank you. And to open our public meeting, please, a mover and a seconder. Deputy Mayor moves, seconded by Councillor Miltonberg, that Ashfield Colburn Wawanosh Township Council hereby opens the Planning Advisory Committee public meeting to consider the zoning bylaw amendment application made by Kimberly and Montgomery Pryor. All in favor of this motion. And that again is carried. Thank you. Uh, now we are, I would like to call this meeting of the Ashfield Colburn Awolanosh Planning Advisory Committee meeting to order and ask if any members have any pecuniary interest to indicate at this time of this agenda. Nothing noted, I thank you. The purpose of the meeting is the fact this is a public meeting to consider the changing the zoning on the property described as plan 574 part block G, Colburn, 82733 Hunters Road. This is a requirement that a public meeting be held under the Planning Act, which requires the council hold at least one public meeting and the proper notice be given. The application was submitted by Kimberly and Montgomery Pryor to the Township of Ashfield, Colburn, Wallanosh, and considered complete on the 12th day of July, 2021. 
Notice of the public meeting was mailed by the municipality to all property owners within 120 meters of the property on July 21st, 2021, and notice was posted on the subject property. I would like to welcome Selena, if you would like to present this application uh, to us at this time, please, Selena. Great, thank you, Mayor McNeil. Good morning, everyone. Um, bear with me if, if that's okay to try and get this set up here. Um, okay. So this is application uh, Z0921. It has been submitted for the purpose of constructing a recreational residence and a two-story garage on the subject property. Um, as mentioned by the mayor, this property is 82733 Hunters Road and the owner and applicant for this file is Montgomery Pryor. So this is the subject property outlined in red here. Um, the recreational residence that is proposed, it is proposed within the 100 year erosion hazard and at a reduced uh, front and side yard setback. Um, council will note the front yard in this case is the smaller west lot line that you see um, closer to the lake. Um, this uh, location is proposed so that the applicant can hopefully construct in the approximate same location of the existing recreational residence that you can see on your screen here. Um, the two-story garage is proposed to allow a workshop on a portion of the uh, second floor. So this is just an image of the subject property looking west from Hunter's Road towards the lake there. Um, this, it is about 1,500 square meters or 0 0.38 acres in size, and it is currently designated uh, Lakeshore Residential. It is zoned both uh, Lakeshore Residential Seasonal or LR1 and Natural Environment Special Zone or NE1-1. Um, and the anyone dash one zone does allow for the recreational residents. Um, the applicant is proposing to just rezone the entire property to uh, anyone dash 47 um, in order to achieve the special provisions aforementioned here. So here's a site plan submitted with the application. It shows that existing house area, which is the approximate area of the new proposed cottage. Um, the new proposed cottage is going to be a little bit larger and a little bit taller uh, than the existing. And then you can see there uh, the location of the proposed garage closer to uh, the rear yard there. Um, so as, as said, the approval of this would legally establish those existing uh, reduced front and side yard setbacks and allow the applicant to exceed the maximum building height of 4.5 meters uh, to allow for the second story garage. A few more details sort of relevant for this application. As said, um, the subject property uh, or sorry, the subject property is accessible via Market Road, and Market Road is a privately owned and maintained row. Um, the lakefront property is referred to a second row, meaning it does not have uh, immediate frontage onto the lake. And so, as said, that front yard is considered to be uh, the portion of the property with frontage onto Market Road or that west portion. Um, the 100 year erosion hazard does currently cross pretty much in half of the existing uh, recreational residence there. To the east of the property are lands that are designated uh, Lakeshore Residential and they are zoned for future development. Uh, these lands are currently in agricultural production, but their zoning would allow them to be developed at a future date. Uh, properties to the north, south and west are all zoned similarly to this property to allow for a recreational residence. So here are the north and south elevations of the proposed house for council. And here is the elevations of the proposed garage. So comments have been received uh, from three neighbors uh, at this time, uh, or sorry, four neighbors at this time, my apologies. Two neighbors uh, before the time of writing did indicate that they are in support of the proposed changes. A uh, third letter of support has been received as well. Um, Ken Brinley, who is a neighbor to the property and does uh, own the access road, is an objection to the zoning bylaw amendment. Um, I would say primarily due to concerns with regard to drainage and impacts on the lands that he owns that are zoned future development to the east. Um, so at this time, it would be my recommendation that staff or that council holds the public meeting as required under the Planning Act, but that they defer on um, issuing a decision on this until hopefully some of these objections can be resolved between the applicant, the objector, uh, and staff. So I do believe that the applicant and the objector are in, um, in the audience today and may wish to speak. So happy to answer any further questions about this at this time. Thank you very much, Selena. And I would like to indicate that I, we will provide an opportunity for the applicant and or agent to speak. 
and then anyone that would like to speak in favor, and then anyone that would like to speak in opposition to this, and then I will entertain any questions or comments from council. So would the applicant or agent like to make any comments at this time? And please use the raised hand function and Caitlin will uh, bring you into the meeting, please. I see that uh, possibly uh, the priors are in attendance. And if you would please uh, turn your video on and, and unmute, I would welcome you to make any comments. Kimberly, welcome. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify on the height part of the cottage. I understand that that is a concern, but in reality, the existing cottage was actually built on the ground. So our cottage is literally rotting from underneath us. So that is why we have to raise it up. We need that ventilation underneath. So that's why the cottage will be taller and, and we were not able to keep the same height. So I just want to clarify that. It was absolutely impossible to build the cottage at the same height because the, the original one is sitting literally on the ground. Thank you for that clarification, Kimberly. Thank you. Um, Montgomery, would you like to make any comments? Uh, if you would, uh, please turn your video and audio on. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm just um, saying the same comments as uh, Kimberly was uh, speaking about that. Um, we proposed this, we went through the Maitland Conservation, got the agreement with them and the go ahead. Um, so the, if you look at the cottage drawings, um, there is no storage area inside the cottage. So that was the reason for the, the second floor for storage and it's marked on the plans storage. Um, um, we had no uh, purpose of putting extra living space up there at all and then the garage is basically a workshop and and car carports Perfect. that's all thank you. yep thank you very much for that uh, clarification montgomery now i would entertain if there are any members of the public that would like to speak in favor of this please use the raise hand function and caitlin would bring you into the meeting And if there's no one else that would like to speak in favor, if there's anyone that would like to speak in opposition, please use the raised hand function and Caitlin would bring you in. I see lakeside shelving and racking. If you would like to turn your video and audio on, if you would like to make any comments at this time, please. Good morning, Ken. You're pretty good at technology. Well, no, I'm not. It's uh, Barb sitting beside me doing it. <laughs> please make any comments you'd like to. Well, ba basically the comments that we have on it, the cottage as it exists, if you take the cottage as it exists, they want to make the cottage bigger, which we're saying no. The other thing too is also it's the size of the lot has to be within the 25 square feet of lot, not counting the honey 100 year rezoning or uh, you know the the line through there for the 100 year erosion you can't count that in as square footage of the lot this was all brought to my attention highly on the rod beatty cottage that was built across the, the roadway going back there and um with the new building that they're ex uh building there the new cottage Everybody says it faces Market Road, 
technically everything we have found out, it does not. The road, Hunter's Road is actually the legal description of entry and to the frontage on that property because of lot block B behind it takes well over 70, 80% across the other area of their lot. And there's no way of entering their lot over the bank on the little bit that's left. And the existing cottage is primary on the 100 year erosion. Now, some of the cottagers are scared and they don't wanna get into conflict back there. They're saying, why doesn't he build the cottage back on the lot farther away from the bank? So everybody doesn't have this problem down the road with erosion. And if Ken Brinley stops the main drain, this property floods. I think uh, Celia was there yesterday, looked at the erosion problem we have. And if we block that drain, which is coming up very shortly, because they're not maintaining it. There's 17 cottagers back there and both properties, that one there and the one right beside it that belongs to Mr. Um, Mitchell. If they have that problem, their lots are gone and the roadway down the hill is gone. This drain was put in to protect the cottagers and the erosion problem. That bank was dropping about 10 feet a year off the front of that lot. That cottage would have been gone over the bank only for this drain being put in. Now they tell me Whistle Dixie. They even tried last year to go to council to have a municipal drain put in. The first two people that pulled off that municipal drain is this guy and Mr. Mitchell, the people that want to build the cottage. So if you can afford to spend three or four hundred thousand dollars to build a cottage, surely you look after the drainage that was put in place registered against your property before you're allowed to build. Now, as far as the shed part goes, I'm saying no to any of that. And as far as any larger area on the cottage is no. And the, because if you look at where he's mapped out, even the shed, how does he get on the lot? How is he gonna get on the lot with a vehicle to park? And where's he gonna park? A lot of these guys now back there, even his neighbor, Mr. Mitchell, parks tons of vehicles on our roadway because he's filled the lot with small buildings. Township hasn't done nothing about that. Every time they want to put a building up down there, they drag it in, they put it in. Nobody says a word. And I brought this clearly to your building inspector and that about, they're only allowed one on a cottage lot. And if they got a small building there now, you can't build a shed because that's the rules of the planning act. So how many buildings can they put? These are questions that I need answered as well as we need a true survey of the lot to what he really owns. I asked that specifically to them. It wasn't done. And basically the row of trees along the back of their property, they say they're theirs. When you look down the, the line between the survey stakes, that's all on the road allowance. So you got to have a true measurement here before you get allowed to build even the cottage to what they have and what they don't own. That's my point of view. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and this was Ken Brindley for everyone's knowledge. And thank you very much, Ken, for your comments. Uh, Caitlin, are you aware, is there anyone else with the raised hand function that would like to comment before I would uh, defer to council? There's none at this time. Thank you very much. And thank you, uh, Caitlin, and to all of the individuals that's, that uh, spoke. Now, do members of council have any questions or comments on this application? Councillor Miltonberg first, please. I would just like to suggest that we defer it until the comments made are answered and we have all our information. That's a very uh, astute observation. Any other questions or comments? Uh, uh, Councillor Snowblum, please. Um, I, I was looking for drawings when I was looking at my agenda and see any. So um, I, unless they're buried somewhere on my agenda, I, that was the first I saw those drawings. So I've got some concerns about that. And um, 
also Mr. Brinley brings up a point, I guess I, I have a question possibly for our chief building official. Um, in instances such as this, is it um, considered uh, part of protocol to do a, a survey on the property before building um, a, a structure of such as a cottage or a recreational residence? <laughs> To determine what to determine where your property actually is. Thank you for the question. And uh, Brett, uh, comment, please. Uh, as part of the building permit process, generally speaking, there are surveys involved, both for block training and drainage, and then uh, uh, generally when we do minor variances to confirm the structures are in the proper location after, in accordance with the minor variance. So, follow-up question: Has that been um, done? In this instance? No, because the we haven't issued any building permits. So it'll be something I'd require at the time of the building permit. Um, okay. So it, it's up to, generally we leave it up to the applicant because if things don't go smoothly or other issues arise and they're at the cost of the surveyor. So uh, my understanding is they do have a survey done at some point to, to get them going. So. Okay. Um, I, I totally agree with Councilor Miltenberg and the, our planner that we defer this. Perfect. Thank you very much for that, uh, Councilor Snowman. Any other questions or comments from members of council? We have seen a desire, and I'm going to ask for a show of hands to defer this uh, for a future decision when uh, the situation uh, is clear, more clearly resolved. Show of hands if we're in that sentiment to do so. And that is a desire of uh, the uh, Planning Advisory Committee. Thank you very much uh, to everyone for all of your input and to Council for this decision. With that, I would entertain a mover and a seconder that we adjourn this meeting. Moved by Councillor Forrester, seconded by Councillor Miltenberg, that there being no further business, the public meeting be hereby closed at 9.23 a.m. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. I thank you. And a mover and a seconder to reconvene our regular council meeting, please. Councillor Van Stone moves. Deputy Mayor Watt seconds that Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh Township Council hereby reconvenes our regular council meeting. All in favor of that motion. And that is carried. Thank you. On to the accounts. A mover and a seconder for the payment of the uh, current accounts, please. Uh, Councillor Snowblin moves, uh, Deputy Mayor Watt seconds that Ashfield, Colburn, Wabinosh Council hereby authorizes the payments of the August 2021 accounts as presented. Are there any questions on any of these lines? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried. I thank you very much. On to the previous month's accounts, a mover and a seconder for the payment of these accounts, please. Councillor Miltenberg moves, Councillor Forrester seconds that Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh Township Council hereby approves the payment of the July 2021 accounts in the amount of $557,434.52. Are there any questions on any of these numbers? And I'm going to go first to Councillor Fisher, please. And we have our very capable treasurer, Ellen McManus, in attendance to respond. <laughs> Thank you. Just on page 74. At the top, penalty and interest taxes. Can you just educate me? Like, is that late charges? On Alan, please. Yeah, so that is um, penalty and interest charge on taxes that are um, in arrears. And then I, okay, so that's what I guessed. Is it? Is it any higher than previous years? Um, I would have to look at that. I, I see remember. our CAO. Do you have a comment to make? I say no because we budgeted 50 and we're only at 40 months so. so it's right in line or less. I remember we talked about the, at the beginning of COVID whether we would, um, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. or whether we would um, forgive late. And we decided not to, so I was just interested to see if that's any higher than other years. 
Right. Good comment. And, and I would suggest that we have not seen an increase in that. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions on these numbers? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion as presented. And that is carried. Thank you. And thanks, Ellen. 6.3, the summary revenue slash expenditure reports for the Township, Lucknow and District Medical Center, the Lucknow and District Recreation from January to July of 2021. A mover and a seconder for this, please. Uh, Councillor Miltonberg moves, Councillor Forrester seconds that Ashfield Colburn Walwanosh Township Council adopts a summary revenue slash expenditure reports of the treasurer as written. Do we have any questions on any of these numbers? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried. Thank you. On to the department and uh, committee reports. We're going to go to water first. And thank you very much, Ellen. Uh, the water report, we have all read it. It is our responsibility to uh, understand this. Do we have any questions on this report? It is for information. We're good. Okay, thank you. The South Lucknow Distribution System Inspection Report, we have also been presented with that. Do we have any questions on that? And again, it is for information of council. Uh, Councillor Forrester, please. Thanks, Glenn. I, I looked at that a couple of times and I couldn't find a score. Is there a score on that? Staff, any comments? Uh, our clerk, Florence Witherspoon. Um, there usually is a score. Um, I do know that when I was speaking to the um, the compliance officer that they had absolutely no concerns um, that aren't being addressed or met. So um, I'll have to take another gander through it. Pardon me, I'm just coming off of vacation as well. So if I see it throughout the meeting, I'll just let you know, Wayne, okay? Perfect, thank you for that and, and no concerns have been indicated. Councillor Snowblin, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Page 134, and we're on the South Lucknow report, right? Correct. Yeah. Page 134 of the report, um, there's some, uh, the operating authority um, noted that, that um, there was an issue regarding some of the records. I wondered if um, administration might be able to speak to that about what happened and how it was resolved. So the operating authority um, is Veolia Water and this is an, uh, a system that is owned and operated by Kieran Kinloss. Um, so we just buy water from Kieran Kinloss, just to note. Um, uh, it, it looks like it was just from, from reading this, it should be noted that the operating authority practically notified the ministry about the missing records. Um, I can follow up with them as to how they did resolve that. I, I guess it, it does say that it was um, a, a chain of custody sign off format. Um, it says in the next paragraph. Okay. Would you like me to follow up with this just for some clarification? Well, I guess um, part of my my concern over this is the, the legislative um, uh, burden that uh, we are, are charged with as counselors in terms of water safety for our residents mm -hmm. and how that um, is reflective on us as counselors. So I guess I take the water reports very seriously. And um, when I see you know, something that seems as though it's maybe just uh, a little off, off course or off center or veered from the center. I like to know about it because I wouldn't want anything to come back on us somehow. So, yeah, I think it would um, be in our best interest as counselors to just be knowledgeable about this, if nothing else. I will send a follow-up email with an explanation for that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that, uh, Clerk Witherspoon. And, and your comments are spot on, Councillor Snowblin. And thank you very much for uh, verbalizing those. Absolutely. 
any further questions or comments on the report? Thank you for noting that again, Councillor Snowblum. On to our Chief Building Officials Report, a very positive report. Uh, Brad is here to answer any questions that anyone may have. Do any members of council have any questions of Brett? Brett, would you like to make any comments? Great I'm, work. No, I'm, I'm good, yeah, thanks. When you're good, we're good. Great work. Yeah, keep it up. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the work of uh, all of our staff, and especially uh, in this particular department. You do a great, uh, great job. Port Albert Master uh, Servicing Plan 7.2.2. We should set a date for this public meeting and it has been suggested to have it in September. Would it be appropriate for an evening meeting? What does everyone think and what date uh, would we like it? Councillor Van, please. Um, the third week of September, I am away and I'm in a position that there's no Wi-Fi. So if it's that week, then I'll have to be absent. Okay. That's the, uh, the week oh, the, I better get on the right months here. The week of the 20th, Bill, you're away? Yes, or? the week of the 20th. So you're here the week of the 13th? Yep. <clears throat> um. What about, uh, what, I'm just asking, what about Thursday the 16th? Would that work with everyone, would it not? Glenn, is this an evening or a day meeting? I would think it should be an evening meeting, Jennifer. I would suggest, this, uh, you know, a six, seven o'clock, like whatever works, but however I think an evening meeting. Okay, I'm free in the evening. Is that early enough? Do you want it earlier in September? Are we good at the 16th? I have to check. Uh, the Ben Miller Hall is going to have their um, beef barbecue in September, and I'm not exactly positive which night. I can check here on my emails. Do you, is it a Thursday night, Gloria? No? I can't remember. Okay. Um, I, I guess I'd be thinking either the 9th or the 16th of September. It, Probably the 16th, the, that, that week of the 6th, everyone's just going back to school. So maybe the 16th. Uh, Councillor Forrester, you're back from BC by then? You're happy and... Not 6 a.m. though. I don't... That uh, meeting tomorrow night, I'll be a little late for that because I have to milk that night, so... Sure. Okay. okay. We're, we're, yeah, thanks. Uh, we, so we're looking at... Uh, Thursday, the 16th of September. Does that work for everyone? You're good, Danita, Bill, Jennifer, Wayne, Gloria, you okay? I'm still, you know what? I have a lot of trouble with emails that have these threads. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't find the date they're having their dinner. So what time should we have it? Six o'clock, seven o'clock? What's everyone now feel? Six, Jennifer? Oh, you're seven? See. I can't count fingers. Okay, seven, deal. Seven o'clock, everyone's good at that? Okay, so let's pencil it in for uh, September 16th at 7 p.m. Staff, does that work from your schedule also? It works here, we'll check with the BM Ross, and if it isn't, we will let everyone know. Okay, perfect, that's great. Thank you very much. So tentatively, we will uh, set the date for that a public meeting to be September 16th at 7 p.m. Perfect, thank you. Uh, on now to the administration department. We have nothing under cemetery or drainage. Uh, the flag lowering policy, everyone has read that. Do we have any questions or comments on that before uh, we would uh, adopt that in section 14 as a bylaw? Everyone good with it? We thank very much our, our staff for researching this. So with that, I'll ask for a show of hands if we're in support to adopt that in section 14 as a bylaw. And, and that 
supported by council. Thank you very much. On to 7.5.2, the Green Stream Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, the second intake. Uh, staff, do you have any comments to make to us on this? Ellen, please. Um, I think the report um, explains the, um, the background here. We're still waiting to hear back from the uh, ministry staff on whether this is actually a requirement and if so, whether it would be eligible under this program. So basically, once we get those two answers and we are we find out if we are eligible and it is required, we'd like to proceed with an application. That makes absolutely uh, sense. And at this time, we're, we're not sure. We have not received the final clarification as to whether a second well is required. CAO, would you like to confirm that? I've reached out to MOE on a few occasions and I'm going to meet with them uh, because as everyone recalls, we there were two wells there to begin with and uh, we had a cap one just because the arsenic levels and, and uh, they already knew that we only had one well there and it, that's not unusual for some of our smaller water systems. So I'm still in uh, talks with MOE just to see if we can clarify that because uh, we could go ahead and drill the second well as well as they requested and we could have the same problem we had before. So um, I'm still with uh, talking with them right now. So um, we'll get back to you uh, as to know outcome, uh, whether we do or not. So. Perfect, thank you for that. So I, I'm gonna ask uh, for a show of hands of councils and support of staff making this application if so required. And we don't know that yet at this point in time. Are we in support of this? Yep, supported by council. Thank you very much. We'll leave that to a very capable staff. Uh, planning fees review. Uh, we have reviewed this and it is uh, prudent that we always keep our fees uh, current. Do any members of council have any questions or comments on this, please? Uh, Councillor Miltenberg, please. It looks like no fees are going down and some of them are going up significantly based on the complexity of the files and the increased staff time required to review. And I'm just wondering, like one jumps from 66 to 9,000, which is a, a massive jump in percentile and numbers. Um, just wondering, has it really increased the complexity that much? Because that's way beyond the cost of inflation, staff rises, we can't blame it on insurance. What got so much more complex? That just seems an awful jump to me. I could make a comment on that or would staff like to, I, I uh, CAO? Uh, um, I think Florence was on this working group. If Florence is there, maybe she can chime in if she may or may not know the answer. Thank you. Florence, would you like to make any comment, please? So I was involved in this working group, and one of the major things that was considered when we were reviewing is the fact that um, comparable to other municipalities in our local counties, um, some applications were not up to par. Um, also, the complexity and the time that it takes to review these applications, um, especially now with you know the government legislation and the studies that are required and potentially the contentious nature of these applications, the amount of time that's spent on it we have to make sure that that time is actually covered, that the cost of that is covered. Um, so I know that when we were going through this, there was an opportunity, depending on how far they were in an application, that it may, um, cost may come out afterwards as well, depending on what needs to happen, be it through a third party consultation or whatnot. So um, I think in the end, those that were on the working group felt confident that um, based on like, say like a plan of subdivision as an example, um, in the grand scheme of the application from start to finish, the cost of having this done is, is adequate um, based on, you know, how the big, the, how large the project is. Kind of thing. So, um, Glenn, if you had anything to add on that. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Florence. And I would like, a great question, Councillor Miltenberg, and I would like to say with, uh, with uh, a lot of um, confidence, that that increase is very, very justified. The complexity of these files moving forward has 
changed tremendously. And this is just being cost recovery. It's not to make any money, it's cost recovery and very justified. Uh, follow up please, uh, Councillor Milton So to clarify for when, as we all know, we get to answer questions and I like to have it in my own mind as well. Uh, I can imagine that the complexity of it has uh, increased because it has with everything it seems with the red tape, but it sounds like we were also undercharging for an amount of time and we are making up that difference. Is that what I heard, Florence? I wouldn't say that we were undercharging for an amount of time. I wouldn't say that we were, were making up the difference. I would suggest that we're making sure we're not subsidizing because these are applications, these are user-driven applications and um, the tax base should not be paying for these applications to go through. So the idea is to ensure that, it's, that the applicant is paying for what they're asking for. All right, thank you. That's all. Yeah, so, yeah just to follow up on that. So I, I would suggest that the previous fees were appropriate at that point in time. Today, they're not. These are the appropriate numbers for cost recovery. Okay, good. Any further questions or comments on this? Okay, with that, I would entertain a uh, show of hands if we're in support of this uh, fee uh, uh, change. And that is supported by council. Thank you very much. On to the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. Do any members of council have any questions of our staff on that, please? And this was for the uh, public work shed. I think uh, we're very fortunate uh, uh, and uh, that there's a grant available for this. So I would just entertain a show of hands uh, and we'll adopt that in section 14 as a bylaw. And that's supported by council. Thank you very much. And, and uh, thank you to our staff for, for applying for this, for the uh, upgrades to our sheds. 7.5.5 is a rather interesting situation in the North Huron, Perth Huron family health team representative. We've all read that. I'm sure it's uh, clear as can be to all members of council. Are there any questions before I would uh, uh, defer to our staff uh, for comments, please? Uh, Councillor Miltonberg first. Just wondering why Huron Kinloss is included if we're talking North Perth and North Huron, because they're Bruce. They're still covered by the Wingham Hospital, so that's why they call it North Huron. It's not specifically North Huron, it's, it's the Wingham Hospital. Oh, okay. So it's not North Huron like the municipality. It's North Huron. Okay. Thank you. Oh, great question. Right answer. Any other questions or comments? Do we want a representative on this? Like there's only going to be one representative from all these uh, various uh, uh, municipalities. Um, <clears throat> is it necessary for us to make an appointment? What is the desire of this council? And when I say an appointment, it would be for consideration. There's only going to be one. Uh, I'm going to go to CAO and then Councilor Milton Burke, please. Here in Kinloss does have someone that's interested in it. And, and if you look at the my report, it does say uh, possibly we can do rotation every term, every two year term. So that might just uh, suffice everyone. Uh, um, so that's all I have to add. Okay, thank you, Councilor Milton Burke, and then Councilor Forrester. Yeah, I think we should throw our name in the hat and um, maybe not for a competition, but for a rotational term, making it clear that that person isn't me. <laughs> but I do think we nerd ACW to be one of the representatives. That's a very smooth uh, intro, uh, Councillor Miltenberg, because it probably should be someone uh, with knowledge or uh, a uh, connection, a client or in the catchment area of the Wingham uh, Hospital. Councillor Forrester, what comments would you have? Well, I got that email too, because I'm on the doctor recruitment committee. And I saw it because like our patients that go to that hospital were so small. I didn't think we needed to be on that, but if you want to be on that, that's fine too. But that was my thoughts on that. I, I yeah, uh, CAO please. If we have a representative from here in Kinloss, we can start from there. And uh, if, if so be it, uh, we can let here in Kinloss take the lead and let them appoint their member. And if they want to, if everyone agrees to do the rotation in two years, uh, we'll have our opportunity to, to uh, be on the member uh, in, in time. So, That's, Is council good with that? Uh, uh, Councillor Forrester and Milton Burke, please. Well... I sit on doctor recruitment, so I know the ins and outs of that. So if you want me 
to sit on that. That's fine too. So that's up to council too. So, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Miltenberg. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I like Mark's idea. I mean, I don't, I, I would not like to just say, oh, in perpetuity, let's leave it with the other municipality. I would like to say, okay, I think at some point we need a turn to, because I can only imagine that there will be budget requests and I don't know, things following from this at some point in time. And I'd like to, uh, sorry, in, in, in the future, I'm, you know, and again, not me, but I, I don't think that we should not uh, participate. I, I like the rotating idea and whoever does it first is fine with me. Okay, so thanks. Yep, perfect, thanks for that. So are we good? I'm, I'm asking clarification. Are we good to not have a, a person put forward on this at this point in time? However, we will through the rotation. Would you like someone put on it now? What's your preference? Councillor Snowblum, please, and then Van Stone. Well, I think we should put our name in and then contact here in, Kirk, here in Kinloss to see if they're interested in doing it on a rotating basis. If that's what I'm understanding from our CAO, uh, if that's the vision that Mark had for the rotation. But um, since it's newly amalgamated by not, by not putting our name in right now, it might be more difficult to get our name in later. Uh, I, I just wouldn't want to miss the train on this. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Um, our names definitely are like, those five municipalities are definitely in. We're all in, but they just need one representative from those five. But the a lot of them are suggesting the two-year term. So if here in Kinloss wants to make their person start off, we'll do the rotation thereafter, and then we would explain that to them. <laughs> But, but, but you haven't reached out to here in Kinloss at this point to see if they're interested in that. No, they have indicated they are interested. They have a member ready to go on. No, I mean in rotating with ACW. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't deal directly with them. I'll deal with the hospital uh, family yeah, health team, and I'll advise her that this is our request. So. That, that we'd be involved in the rotation of all these municipalities. Are you good at that, Councillor Snowblum? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Councillor Forrester, please. You're good, Wayne. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, perfect. So are we are we good to, to leave it uh, uh, at this time? And Mark will communicate with the family health team to indicate on a rotational basis and, and we'll uh, um, be good uh, for the other municipalities that the first representative at this time. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that discussion. Cumulative, uh, cumulative impact study, 7.5.6. We've had this presentation. I really wanna thank staff for the background on this because we have a lot of information that dates back to a previous discussion we had in 2018 when uh, Trevor uh, Hallam uh, was uh, uh, filling in uh, as clerk for ACW at that time. Great, great documentation. Uh, council thoughts on this, please. Uh, Councillor Vanstone first, please. Um, yeah, Glenn, it was probably me that asked to, for this to be brought up to the uh, attention of Council. And I wrote out a little outfit here um, that I'd like to read, if I could. Please. And, um, uh, well, first of all, hi all. I asked for this to be put on uh, the agenda so we could discuss it. Because I believe we need to help the people at Bowles Bridge with this dilemma. But I don't think we can win this. As you all know, we fought the one pit that had a master, uh, a mature forest on it and lost to the tune of over $100,000. So I was thinking, why can't the township put stipulations on the pit, example, you know, better berms, less dust, et cetera. Um, I have asked these questions before and got no satisfaction to my inquiries as to what we can do. So this study, if we do it, I am told will give us these answers. If the council will take the time to go to Barna, then drive that road all the way to County Road 25, you will see what I mean. Um, the berms that the Holmesville dump put up are quite acceptable, if you've all seen them. Uh, but the fences and the berms at the gravel pits you will drive by are deplorable. Weeds and a lot of dust on the, in, in, on the internal roads. 
So for $50,000, maybe we could get the answers uh, because $100,000 to fight it will only put us right back to where we are now with no answers and the rest of the pits that are coming. And I believe me, there are more pits coming uh, that uh, we won't have the answers or any ammunition to fight them with. So that's my feelings on that. And I'd like council to weigh in. Thank you. Thanks for your comments, Bill. Other members of council, I'm going to go to Councillor Miltenberg next, please. Um, uh, thanks, Bill, for those thoughts. I'd like to maybe carry them a bit further. When uh, the one on Cherry Lane went through, this was brought up uh, by Gina McDonald. And when the pit uh, ultimately was accepted, because of course that's the law, um, this was dropped, which was too bad. And um, uh, there was no momentum at that time. And now the momentum's picking up because there's another pit. And, and I have no idea what the process was uh, years ago when Huron County went by through, and I'm not meaning that anybody did anything wrong because I don't know, but it appears to me that if at that time uh, they would have looked more closely and said, well, we really shouldn't have it in Balls Bridge area because that is a culturally significant area, which I think, but it isn't identified as such. So now you're trying to fight it when the door is already open, you know what I mean? So if, if, and I, I think it needs to be done. I'm not sure how it needs to be done, but I think we need to look at our own municipality and say, okay, is there another spot? Because there's the balance of it's extractive and they get to take their, use it as they can balanced against, yeah, but this is culturally significant. Like you wouldn't want it going up next to a culturally significant building, which would be easier to fight but a culturally significant area. And again, part of my interest in this study was saying, well, it's all deemed extractive, but clearly if everybody extracts, then you have destroyed the quality of life for everyone. So can we put in, okay, once so many are running, then no more get to run, regardless of whether it's zoned that way, because you are destroying everything if you, if every if every farm that was deemed extractive decides to go extractive, then you have destroyed a lot of things. Um, so there's two ways you could go about it. And I'm not really a fan of the first way, which I'm gonna suggest is that the staff and the county planner figure it out, which is you go and you look at them all and you look at the cultural things and you ask the people, what do you feel in this area is culturally significant or not? And can you back it up? I think Falls Bridge has a lot of, a lot of things that you could say it is significant, but they weren't annotated before. And so then we have this situation. And if you had uh, this sort of cumulative impact study, which laid it out ahead of time, it, it seems to me that, and I know I keep saying Balls Bridge, but it's not about Balls Bridge to me, it's about the big picture, but I'm using the Balls Bridge as an example. If we say no, then the company quite rightly should go to LPAT because they have the right to do it. And if we say yes, then the community is gonna to go to LPAT. So we have to back one or the other, and it's gonna cost us a pile of money no matter what way we look at it in this situation. That's what I think is gonna happen. If, if we can spend this money, and in the future, if something like this comes up, and we can say, look, we've already decided that you can or you can't, and if you do, you have to do it this way, and it's in our plan, then the person buying the property knows ahead that that might happen, and it'll save money in the long run is my thinking. Because if you don't have any of it written down, they're not bound by it by law or by anything. We have no defense. And this way you might be able to preserve a way of life while protecting the rights of the people who want to get their extract out. So that's my comment. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Miltenberg. Councillor Fisher, please. <clears throat> If we were to go ahead and spend this money on a cumulative impact study, and then you get your results from it, it's not gonna change the provincial legislation. So we're still dealing with the framework of the laws of the province, regardless of what a cumulative impact study tells us. Um, so I feel like it's not gonna make a difference when it comes to the LPAT. Um, it, it, may, it would back up our, our sentiments, 
but it wouldn't change any laws. There'd be no teeth to that for the hundred thousand dollars it might cost. But um, I had another thing. I forget what it was going. I'll let somebody else talk. I'll come back to it. Okay, thank you for that, Gloria. And I would like to to build on your comments, and then we're going to go to Councillor Snowden and uh, Forrester. And that's the fact that yeah, we we've cited a hundred thousand dollars for this report, and as the gravel and and my facts, the comments I'm going to make they're just factual. It's not an argument. It's just facts. The fact is, the gravel is where the gravel is. We have a uh, a, uh, a, a aggregate in in Colburn Township, right in that area. It is what it is. Will the accumulative impact study say, yeah, there's a lot of gravel in that area? Absolutely. The provincial government, as Councillor Fisher commented, mandates the extraction of aggregate for Ontario's use. As to whether we do or do not do this study, I concur. I don't think that the provincial government it will have any effect on their decision of that. And that's just a factual comment. Uh, Councillor Snowblin, Forrester, and then I'm gonna go back to uh, Councillors Miltenberg and Vanstone, please. I'm usually on an issue, I'm very <laughs> decisive. And I, I have to say on this issue, um, I, I'm just not sure where I'm falling. I agree with our mayor that the, you know, the, the gravel is where the gravel is. We can't move it. And I understand that. But I also understand the, the sentiments of the residents that live there and not just from the historical perspective. Um, I think there's some real issues about some of the folks that live there as indicated through that meeting that we had there a while ago. I'm uncertain that we can really save $35,000 to $40,000 is what it would cost for um, a, a study. And one of the emails that came in, I think it was yesterday, talks about the social impacts as opposed to the um, I'm looking for this person's words exactly, but more the environmental. So I think it would cost probably closer to $50,000 for a study. It seems like an awful lot of money and I'm not certain what would result from it. I'm not certain that it would have, the so that it would capture the social impact. Uh, to me, that's an intent. It's more of an intangible. I think you have to look at more tangible when you're looking at an impact study. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm open to you know looking at opinions from all areas, and I also want to point out too that myself and, and Councillor Fisher were not on this council at the time of these things. This these previous studies and so on. Although we were attending meetings, we didn't have decision-making at that time. And I think I feel maybe, personally, I feel maybe a little bit lacking because I wasn't involved as a council member with the um, previous um, pit and so on. So I, I'm still formulating my thoughts and I'm sorry to be so vague on that. No, don't, don't apologize, Kevin. Thank you very much for your comments. Councillor uh, Forrester and then Milton Burke and Vanstone, please. Okay, thanks, Glenn. Um, I'm, I follow right along with Gloria. I think Anita's kind of leaning that way too. If this thing has no teeth, I can't see spending 50000 on it. Like if they take it to the province, we're going to lose anyways. And where I am right now, in, it's called Seashell, British Columbia. It, I think it has a population of 32,000 and there's a gravel pit right in the middle of the town and they load barges right on the beach. So it's happening everywhere. And I talked to the guy last night on the beach that runs it and he says, I said, is there any flack? But he always said, oh, sure, but that's where the gravel is. So there's nothing they can do about it. So 
that's my thoughts on that. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much uh, for that. And just to be clear, we don't want on a confused situation. This is about a, a cumulative impact study. We're not talking no. about the balls. Uh, uh, we're not okay. talking about the Little Lakes pit. This is a cumulative impact study. Councillor Miltenberg and then Van Stone, please. Yeah, I'd like to address a couple things. Uh, uh, the fact, my mute, no, okay. The fact that you presented Glenn in part is correct. It is the provincial policy and the gravel is there. But the fact is that's the way it is. Um, that's never actually convinced me because the only thing that affects change is someone saying, you know what, that's not quite right. And so you wanna talk about, there was no laws about cutting trees. So everybody was cutting trees. And then all of a sudden they said, we know what the cumulative impact of this cutting trees is, it's erosion and it's uh, wind erosion and the soil erosion and now you have to, there's, there's bylaws coming in or tree replanting. That's, it was allowed, but when you saw the impact of it all, they realized the impact was wrong if everybody could just take what they wanted. So there had to be controls. And that goes on with everything, whether it be taking down historic buildings, you know, sure you take down one or two, but all of a sudden when you take down them all, then it's like, whoa, 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 now there has to be protections in place. So the way I view it is, Yes, the gravel is there, and yes, the province says that you can take it, but I think that that is too big of a blanket statement of what can be done with gravel. I think if you take all the gravel that's available at the same time, the cumulative impact of that community is, is um, devastating, devastating. And whether this, this, and I know Anita and Gloria, you weren't here, and when it came up on the last term, I heard at that how it had come up on the term before with the one that Bill was talking about that they lost um, and spent 100,000 because we talked about it then. So what it seems like to me is that this comes up every time a gravel pit comes up and we say, well, the province says this and we can say nothing about it. And the county said this, well, why aren't we say, saying something? and saying in our official plan, this is what we would think should happen. Because right now, what we're saying to our residents is, well, we can't do anything about it. So I guess you can come and complain, but at the end of the day, we can't do anything about it because it's coming from the top. Well, things change at the top when there's motions from the bottom and everyone, including the gravel industry themselves, says they are unpoliced or poorly policed and years behind. Like that is a problem and it's not being gonna be acknowledged and it's not going to be addressed until somebody starts making some noise about it. It really isn't. So whether this helps right now, I, I see this as a long term. If the next gravel pit comes through, hang on, I'm gonna mute and somebody, <laughs> shut that phone off, I'm so sorry, hang on a sec. You know, no one ever calls me and then <laughs> everybody's calling me now. It's very exciting to have a life finally. But anyway, whether this helps the current situation, who knows? Whether it helps in the future, it's a start. But right now what we're saying is, well, folks, we can't do anything. And if everybody in that extractive gravel pit decides to take it, we can't do anything. And not only that, we're not going to try because we feel like we can't do anything. So this is steps to protect the future that it's, it's to protect the communities that are going to be threatened because the extract is there. And I want the farmer to be able to use that, but not if, if everybody on my row decides to take out their gravel at the same time, this is a huge problem for the area. If they do it in staggered amounts and they put up their berms, then it is what it is. And that to me is what the cumulative impact, it, it's about saving the next ball's bridge because we've said ahead of time, and even though it's legal, if I was gonna buy a farm to take the gravel out of it, I would say, oh, you know what? That one's, they already are trying to protect. Why would I get into a big hassle about more standards or more whatever? Like there'd have to be a really good economic uh, reason to take on where you know is valued by a community versus one that's not in there. I don't know, this is, 
This is to me about offering hope to the residents and help rather than saying, well, you know what? Okay, we'll kick it up, but you're just gonna get smashed down because that's the current law and, and we can't change it. Well, I believe in one person at a time, you can change the world and one little municipality, whatever. You, you have to try, it's not right. And if it's not right, then you should be trying to do something. And that's my soapbox. So thank you so much. <laughs> that's good. Thank you very much for your comments. I'm going to go to Councillor Vanstone. And then uh, Fisher, please. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I echo uh, Councillor Miltonberg's uh, sentiments. And this this is a study. Um, I, I don't know if we can do anything to stop the one at Balls Bridge right now because it, it is going and he has his rights and it is a provincial policy. But there's so many flaws in this uh, gravel extraction. Like um, if, if say one owner has four pits, then I would like to see it that that owner finishes a pit before he starts the next one. Like, why are they drawing out of four different pits uh, if, if they, you know, all the gravel is the same. But anyways, there's a whole lot of things, uh, better berms, there's a whole lot of good things that we could do. And as Jennifer says, if somebody doesn't do something, if we just keep sitting on our hands, then it's just gonna keep happening and there's more and more people that are gonna be upset. Uh, and as the one gentleman told us at the last meeting, we are their last resort. Like we are supposed to help the people of our community. I know this is a small step, but it is a step in the right direction. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you uh, for those comments. And, and as far as uh, your comments about that were made, that, that we are the, uh, we, we direct and we're elected to direct and protect the interests of our residents all of our residents. And I don't think, I don't want to confuse and, and intermix these two situations. The Little Lakes pit is a separate issue from this. This is a study that would be undertaken and we had a quote, uh, you know, for a substantial number of dollars. Will it do any good? I, I'm not so sure. But anyway, uh, Councillor Fisher, please. It's... Uh... Like what if we decided to do a cumulative impact study on the effects of agricultural drainage? I mean, you can bring it up for anything. The effects of how many farmers are spread manure on my road. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's, we're gonna spend a lot of money. We're gonna spend a lot of money on this. Uh, when it goes to LPAP, because it will. And who should be paying for this fight? My phone's going now, Jennifer. Because <laughs> um, it will be a it will be a fight, and and I do want to support this sensitive area. And I want to. Oh, I'm going to mute this for a sec. You don't need to listen to my phone messages. Um, I believe we should work very hard to protect that sensitive area. I believe it'll cost a lot of money. I believe there are things we can do to make it um, much more aesthetically pleasing. Bill mentioned the berms, et cetera. All of that's gonna cost a lot of money, I think, as we move along. But when it comes to just the cumulative impact study, I have a problem with consultants and their huge fees and you can get them for absolutely everything. Um, I don't feel like it will help us. Um, I know what Jennifer's saying, that perhaps it'll help affect legislation down the road. Um, but maybe that should be done as a county, the cumulative impact part. Would it have a bigger impact on affecting provincial legislation? I'm not convinced it'll help us with this particular um, problem. Okay, thank you for that. And again, we don't want to confuse the Little Lakes project, that's a separate discussion, to what we're dis discussing, committing dollars to this impact study. Uh, Councillor uh, Snowblin and then uh, Forrester, please. I don't disagree with a lot of what Jennifer has said, that change has to be affected, you know, um, from somewhere, and that's usually from the bottom and, and works its way up. 
I guess what it, it concerns me to spend this kind of money uh, as Gloria said on consultants, because you can get a consultant for anything. And it's sort of how I feel when I go to the mechanic to get my car fixed. I'm never really certain what I'm paying for. And um, if we were gonna spend this money, wouldn't it be wiser to spend it on something that has, is there something that has more teeth to it than a cumulative impact study? on this, and as what, uh, an email recipient said yesterday in an email on the social impacts. Um, is there like a way to lobby legislative change? Because as, I, as Mr. Mayor pointed out, we're talking about changing the legislation here. And I'm not certain that a cumulative impact study done by a consultant is going to sink any teeth into making legislative change. And yet I don't disagree with what Jennifer is saying. We've got to start somewhere. And, it, and as Bill says, we, these people are looking to us to help them with this. And I think we want our municipality to be a, you know, a, a socially and an aesthetically pleasing place to live. And we don't want to see um, gravel pits here and there and all over that aren't aesthetically and socially pleasing and that don't impact on, on uh, historically sensitive areas. Is there something else besides this cumulative impact study that we could spend money on? Thank you for that. <laughs> Councillor uh, Forrester, please. Okay, thanks, Glenn. I'm, I'm totally with Bill on uh, why do they need four pits open and why aren't they closing one before the other? That's my biggest beef because they're just sitting there and they're ugly. And the, and I, the burns, like they should be made some do something with that too because we don't want it, ugly weeds. And But as, as for doing a community impact study I, if it has no teeth i'm not really for it but i think we need to do something but what that something is i'm, I'm not quite sure okay thanks yeah that's fair enough uh counselor okay forrester uh, i'm sorry counselor vanstone miltonberg uh, comments please okay and you know um i don't want to make this into a you know a soapbox opera here but um like we're, we're worrying about that $50,000 for the study, but we don't seem to worry about the $100,000 for the lawyer that we hire. And if we lose, that's just money poured down the drain. Where if we did this study and we can find out that the township can impose certain things before we pass this, if we could impose the fact that they have to build a berm with grass and trees and make it pretty, uh, they have to keep the dust down inside uh, we could, if we could put stipulations like that on the pits that are opening, I think, and the same thing. Okay, um, I asked the little girl from the ministry, who polices this when it says there's only 10 years of, in this pit, right? But the pits are open for 25 and 30 years. So who polices it? Let's make them close them in 10 years and, and open another one. So anyways... That's my thoughts, Glenn. I would far sooner pay it on this uh, study than pay it to a lawyer uh, to defend it. Thank you. Fair enough, uh, Councillor Vanstone. Uh, uh, Councillor Miltonberg, please. Yeah, I'd like to echo what you said a little bit, Glenn. I have no illusions that this is going to help the Balls Bridge case at all. Let's make that very clear. This is not about the Balls Bridge. Even if it could help, it's going to come in way too late. Okay, so that... The Balls Bridge is the catalyst that brought it to us again. It is not going to help the Balls Bridge. So if there's anybody behind it for that reason, that's not why I'm basically championing it. And about the legislation, when you, when you, when you are in a town, you can say, this is our historical um, area. You cannot build a, 
building more than three stories high, you have to have the same facade. We don't want any businesses over here. You can designate areas either not for business or if they're there, they have to conform to a certain way. And that's basically what I'm hoping that the cumulative impact would give you teeth to go say, okay, these are what we, oh, for the love of Pete. And we do love him, don't we? Um, <laughs> I can't, I can't deal with this. No one ever calls me, okay? And I don't allow to turn the stupid thing off. Okay. Um, <laughs> where was I? I was ranting about something. Yes. Okay. So that's my point is that the gravel pits are there. The gravel is there. We, my hope is that we could say this is a culturally significant for wildlife or whatever areas here because we don't really have the buildings or whatever, but we do have very sensitive um, environment areas. And we can say the extra is there. Should you choose to put in an application, we are going to be asking for more berms, less times, uh, reduced hours, uh, nothing on Saturdays, whatever it is that will protect that environmental area. And we can prove it because we have the stats that it's used that way. So if that person does choose to um, uh, go that way, then they know that there are limitations or they're gonna have a battle. And then what you've given is the people in the community have some teeth to their LPAT you know, they are going to protest it and they can say in the official plan, this was not the recommended site. And so, sure, maybe the guy still gets to do it, but he knows that there's going to be limitations or he knows he's going to have a big argument and he knows we don't want it. And so maybe he picks the one that's not in the environmentally sensitive one and we don't have 10 in one spot all at the same time because they're all his pits and he just wants to keep making it. It, it gives the people some teeth. Right now, this has come up twice in my <laughs> lifetime on council. And each time the people feel like they have to convince us. They have to convince us that it's not a good idea. And that's not the case. What they have to convince is the province and we are the way through the province. And this gives them a vehicle. It gives them perhaps some hope. And when I had teenage boys and they really wanted something, I would say to them, you have five minutes to convince me, five. And if they couldn't convince me in the five minutes, we didn't talk about it again. I said, I've heard your arguments, no, it, or yes, whatever it is, right? If you have the cumulative impact study where you don't have to convince me, I'm already convinced the municipality backs you on this area. We can't do anything about it, but we can maybe help you a little further, but it's not me that you're trying to convince. So let's, let's channel your efforts into a different area. I mean, I've heard a lot of comments about our public meeting. And again, it's not the Balls Bridge, it's a catalyst and it's indicative, but they were surprised at how receptive council seemed to be. And it's kind of like, well, <laughs> we're, not, we're not the governing body. And so few people think, really understand, and I didn't either myself, the powers and the, and the controls, how little the municipal council really has. And this is, in my mind, helping the residents. It does nothing to help the current situation. Let me say that again. I really don't think it will. I think in the, past, in the future, it may help. And I'm all for that. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm, and this is not, like, these are all respective, uh, respectful comments. And we're not disagreeing with each other. We're just bringing up facts that we can all make the best decisions. Before I go to Councillor Fisher, I think we'll all recall, and it was alluded to as far as the requirement for berms, that was one of the conditions in the Little Lakes Pit uh, application that was discussed, was the berms that would be built. And that is part of the conditions before a permit is granted. So that's a separate issue again from what this would be, and, and uh, uh, that's just part of the agreement. Councillor Fisher, please. Um, I just wanted to ask Jennifer, like, when when you're thinking in support of a of a study, are you are you thinking that it'll help us? Like, I'm wondering, can we just go ahead ourselves and and create guidelines and bylaws without a study, or are you feeling that we need a study to help us um, lobby the province? 
May I respond? Yeah, yeah, Councilor Milberg, please. Well, I did start out, uh, thanks, Gloria, with two options. And one is that it comes from internally, from staff, with a, along with the county planner. Like, instead of looking at, you know, the county as a whole, why don't we look at here in, or at ACW and say, okay, I, I don't know. Is there another Balls Bridge area out there? And I know I keep saying it, but no, a culturally and a environmentally and a recreational significant area that has extractive zoned around it. I don't know. Somebody does <laughs> staff or they could easily look it up. Is there a way you could do this cheaper with um, lesser things? I don't know. I mean, that would be a question for staff more. I'm interested in having something as we change our official plan in our official plan. Whether that has to come through a consultant or whether I see our county planner is on here, I think we need to look at our official plan when it comes to our gravel extractive industry and do what we can with it. If, if we can do that without accumulative impacts or what, I'm not sure. I'm interested in that answer. Thank you for those comments. And, and I'm going to defer, I, I think you really uh, brought it in. Uh, uh, I'd like some uh, some facts and information from staff and we'll have further discussion. I'll go to Councillor Vanstone after uh, our county planner, Selena, please. Hi everyone, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanna point out relevant to tomorrow's open house conversation that one of the changes proposed for our extractive resources section for council's consideration is going to be requiring that um, an applicant undertake a cumulative impact study in the event that they are locating a pit proximate or beside an existing pit for that area. Um, so that is one of the proposed changes. There are also some additional studies that are being proposed, including um, cultural heritage impact assessments for uh, pits located near areas that would be considered of cultural heritage, and those don't have to be designated. That can just be sort of a local um, trigger that, you know, ACW decides that the area has cultural significance. So um, not trying to butt in here, I just think that is relevant to this conversation, that that is a change proposed. In terms of the mapping Jennifer talked about, it would be very easy for me to produce mapping that shows where um, the current extractive designations are that are currently unlicensed. So I can certainly uh, provide that at a future date if that's the direction of staff or of council. Thank you. Thank you for that input. So for clarification, the cumulative impact study that could be in our official plan that an applicant for uh, extraction in the application, they would be required to provide. Is that my understanding? Correct. And that would be, it, it's, it wouldn't be uncommon, um, not uncommon, it, ACW wouldn't be the first municipality to require that. It is required in other municipalities similar to Colburn that have a high concentration of gravel in certain areas. And yes, that would be on the cost of the applicant in that instance before deeming an application complete that they would have to submit that. I like that. Uh, CAO or clerk, any comments? And thank you very much, Selena. Any comments, uh, facts, information before I go to uh, uh, CAO, you're happy. Uh, Florence, any comments? Seeing none, uh, Councillor Vanstone, please. And then uh, Miltonberg. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, I just uh, wanna go back to what you said, Glenn, about the pit having to have berms. That's true, um, but not all of them. Uh, some of them, they, they'll let them have a fence. But the berms, there's no stipulation on it. All they do is pile this dirt up. They let it grow weeds and sumacs, where, as I said, if you all go down and take a look at what the Holmesville dump did, they put a berm up, nice berm. They seeded it all down. They put cedars in it. Now, when you drive down that road, you're looking, like you're looking at a forest. And these are the things I'd like to know. Now, whether we can get it through the planning, I. I don't care where we get the information. We just need the information. And so if, if we could put it in our master plan that we say, okay, this berm has to be there, has to be so high, has to be grassed, and has to have trees on it. I think that would solve a lot of problems for this community. So anyways, um, that's my two cents worth. Thank you. No, point well taken, uh, Councillor Vanstone. I think we all want the same thing. It's just a matter of how to accomplish it. And I really appreciate uh, Selena's comments. Councillor Miltonberg, please. Yeah, I think I'd like to request that we table this conversation. I'd like to see what we can accomplish through the official plan. Um, 
addressing some of Bill's concerns. I'd, I'd like uh, Selena to bring forward that um, map that she was talking about. And if that does not adequately address what we are hoping to accomplish, we being the Imperial, we, me, um, <laughs> then I would reintroduce the subject. But at this point, I'd, I'd like to table it to see, um, uh, to listen to the official planner on uh, Wednesday night's meeting, I guess that's tomorrow. Um, and then kind of have a list of all the concerns that we have about the pits and see if it addresses it and what is needed to address our final concerns, if that's acceptable, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a really good idea. I really appreciate, as I said, our county planner's comments. So um, I would entertain a show of hands to defer this uh, decision to a future meeting. Is that a reasonable situation? Yeah, and I, I think that's great. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Mayor, supportive. if I may. Yeah, please, yes, please. I'd, I'd sooner second Jennifer's table motion. That way it can be lifted from the table at any point in time where if we just defer it to a further meeting, it could get left for months and months and months and months. So uh, I would far sooner see it tabled and then let Jennifer lift it from the table when she thinks it's fitting. Okay, I'm gonna defer to our CAO Do you have a, or, and our clerk. Uh, as far as process, uh, what uh, would you feel would be appropriate? We know the sentence. To me, table and deferring is the same thing, so it, do, it doesn't matter. So we can defer it. Uh, but I just want to clarify, if you're going to defer it, <clears throat> we're just going to sit tight and wait till we want it to bring back. Um, I know Jennifer talked about reports, or do we just want to wait till tomorrow night's meeting and see how that goes? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, I w uh, Jennifer, would you, I, I don't want to speak on your behalf. Would you like to make a comment, please? Yeah, well, I know I'm going to ask Selena for that. So <laughs> we yeah. can wait to ask her. We can just say, if you send that, then I'll know what my questions are still, because I know that would be one of my questions. Right. Selena, do you want to make a comment, I, please? I can certainly reasonably for the next council meeting get that mapping. It's it, it won't take much effort for our GIS staff and perhaps provide a brief report if that's the sentiment of council, just um, describing the numbers and acres, um, if that's suitable for everyone. Yeah, I, I think we, we just like more information. When this comes up through the official plan, we can uh, have a further discussion on it. CAO, are you a uh, comment? No, I think that's uh, some good ideas, and I think Selena can possibly uh, enlighten council on, on what they can and cannot do for any applications that may or may not be ahead of them, and what uh, conditions we can put on, can put on, and and I know she she can reach out to some other neighboring municipalities that are in the same boat as we are, and see uh, how they resolve some of the matters moving forward that they work together hand in hand to make sure that everyone's issues are addressed via through site plan control or the zoning bylaws. So maybe sleep bring back that type of report. That's perfect. And th we've had a great discussion with this uh, uh, this morning and, and it has uh, been the uh, support of council that, you know, call it defer or table, it's the same thing. And I concur with that, that we will, uh, pending uh, the discussions with our official plan, we will revisit this with further information. Is council all good with that? Great discussion. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, how be we have a break for five minutes, if that's okay with everyone, and then we'll, we'll uh, resume our meeting in five minutes. So it is uh, 1030. We'll come back at 1035. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're, uh, uh, thanks very much, Caitlin, for that. We're just waiting for Councillor Miltonberg and Snowblin to return. Hey, great. Perfect. Everyone's back. We're good. Uh, Let's uh, discuss 7.5.7, .7, the Ben Miller Community Hall cleaning of the outside. Uh, Gloria, do you have any comments you'd like to make on that? Uh, we've all read this. Uh, you may be muted, Gloria. Yes, we were. Um, we actually haven't met since COVID began, but sure. um, maintenance continues. And this is uh, an item that the hall has gotten really dirty. Like you can really see it if you walk up to it. There's a, a all night light outside. I don't know if it attracts all the bugs on particularly two walls of the building. It's blackened with dirt and cobwebs. And so anyway, 
Gina got this quote to get it cleaned and we have to protect, the, of course, the finish on the, the, the siding, et cetera. So to me, I, I just think it's a, it's a no brainer. It's just part of keeping upkeep. And uh, do you want me to talk about the dishwasher also? No, no, one thing at a time. So I think we're good. We all uh, realize uh, that we do have a quote of, of uh, $949.20 for the cleaning of the outside of the building. Any questions on this, or I'm gonna ask for a show of hands. Uh, Councillor Snowblum, please. Well, while we're at it, should we maybe look at uh, St. Helens Hall at the same time to see if it is in need of cleaning as well? Uh, and maybe, maybe our maintenance staff can have a comment on that. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Councillor Snowblum. I saw Councillor Miltonberg with your hand up. Yeah, it's a... Uh not a two-story building they generally look after that themselves i know they've been in trying to keep it clean just in case i will reach out to them this week and i was going to anyway just see how they were doing they haven't had a meeting in a year and a half but we do communicate by phone quite a bit i doubt they're they it, it's pretty easy for them to look after it's it's a one-story building and and uh they're keeners over there so uh, I, I will check in with them. Thank you for thinking of us, but I think at this point uh, they would rather it come from them and then rather have a building inspection come and tell them it needs to be done. So I will check with them. That's perfect. Thanks for the response and thanks very much for the concern, uh, Councillor Snowden. So show of hands if we're in support of moving ahead with this at a cost of uh, $949.20. And and council supports this. Staff, you're good to uh, proceed with that? You're good, perfect. On to the dishwasher. Uh, we uh, have a, a quote for the dishwasher everyone has seen. And I want to remind everyone that we're very thankful that the uh, Charles H. Ivey Foundation have kindly granted 20,000 to the Ben Miller Community Hall in the name of Peter Ivey. Do we have any questions or comments on this, please? Again, none. I'm going to uh, entertain a mover and a seconder uh, for this uh, coming at a cost of $6,915. Moved by Councillor Fisher, seconded by Councillor Van Stone, that Ashfield Colburn Wallenage Township Council agrees to accept the quotation received from Russell Hendricks Food Service Equipment for a Nexus under counter dishwasher in the amount of $6,915.78 including taxes with the funds coming from the Charles H. Ivey Foundation in the name of Peter Ivey. All in favor of this motion. That is carried and I thank you very much uh, to the uh, Peter Ivey Foundation for this uh, grant of money. On to 7.5.9, the gas tax funding. We uh, uh, have, everyone's read that. It's for information and counsel. Any questions on that? Perfect, thank you. Uh, we have a couple of uh, closed session um, uh, items this morning that we will we'll get to. Public Works, we've received the report. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, do you, uh, would you like to respond to any queries or do you have any comments uh, for us on your report, please? Welcome, Tom. Sir, um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the report. Great job, Tom. Get a lot of great comments on your uh, great work with yourself and your staff. Any comments or questions of Tom? Seeing none, that's perfect. Great work, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, lead hand position, that's an appointment uh, in the bylaw of uh, Larry Brindley. We're always happy to see promotion from within. And I will ask for a show of hands if we're in support of this to adopt this as a bylaw in section 14. And that is supported by council. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Tom. Uh, no environmental issue. Committee reports. Do anyone, uh, any members of council have a committee report that they would like to share with anyone this morning? Councillor Miltonberg, please. Um, yeah, I wrote it down here somewhere. Ah, uh, yes. The Dungannon uh, Ag Hall. There is going to be a community... Um, garage sale or yard sale or whatever they call it. This Friday, August 13th from six to nine, a portion of those funds will be going to the Dungannon Community Alliance. They are selling hot dogs, yada, yada, 
to raise funds. That is their first fundraiser since <laughs> March of last year, or whatever. Uh, it's an outdoor yard sale. So just putting it out there. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Any other committee reports of anyone? Hello. Uh, uh, Councillor Fisher, please. Hi. So it, I did find out the date of our uh, Ben Miller Hall, Cardiff Beef Barbecue. It's on September the 16th. So that's in conflict with our Port Albert meeting. And we're concerned that it could affect the numbers that come out to the barbecue. Okay. So what about the week previous, the September 9th, Thursday evening? Uh, it'll be a seven o'clock. Uh, is council all good with that? And, and does staff have any conflicts uh, before they reach out to BM Ross? Councillor Snowblum, please. I have a conflict and I'm unavailable on the 9th. Okay. Uh, um, what about, I'm asking, the, the 20th of September, it's a Monday? Bill's gone. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Are you off that week? Oh. Sorry, Bill, you're off that week. Yes, I won't be available. Okay. Mm. Um, what about the uh, 27th? Monday the 27th. Gloria, Anita, good. good. Forrester's good. Miltonburg, Banstone, you're good, Bill? Okay. Yep. So if staff would reach out to BM Ross to see September 27th, if you would please, staff, any conflicts that you're aware of with your calendars? Okay, so September 27th, 7 p.m. will be the date that we will aim for, okay? And thank you very much, Gloria, for bringing that up. Any other questions uh, or comments or, or committee reports? Uh, uh, we did have the uh, Colburn, uh, Memorial, Colburn Cemetery Memorial Day on... Uh, a Sunday a week ago, uh, we had a real shot of rain come through about an hour in advance, and so that uh, diminished our crowd. However, Chris Plant did an excellent uh, job, and uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Warner was the uh, minister that um, conducted the service, and he did a, an absolutely exceptional job. And uh, Mr. Plant has the, uh, the cemetery in uh, uh, shape, and it was appreciated uh, by everyone. So I wanted to report on that. Okay, on to uh, new business. Does anyone have any new business they would Mr. like? Mr. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Snowbloom. I apologize. Um, I, I just wanted to indicate that I did attend an implementation committee um, meeting for the um, community safety and well-being on August the 4th. There's really not a lot of things to report um, only because it's still such a brand new committee. Um, it's still about setting priorities and um, implementation overviews and that sort of thing. So I just wanted council to recognize that I have been attending. It's just that there's not a lot of um, things that are worth reporting at this point. Oh, thank you very much for that, uh, Councillor Snowblin. Uh, Councillor Vanstone, please. Uh, you actually were unmuted, Bill. Yeah, you're good. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'll have to apologize for this. I had this written down and I wanted to ask uh, Tom, our uh, superintendent. I understand one of our new road signs got smashed all to pieces and I assume we don't have uh, any insurance for that. So we're just out that sign? Um, no, the sign, uh, the sign's still functional. I brought it back in, it's working just fine. And uh, it's going to be, it's charging now, it's going to be put back up. Okay. Um, I hope this isn't an ongoing occurrence, but anyways, we'll have to take it one step at a time. Thank you. Sorry for that. No You're a man of many talents, Tom. Thanks. Okay. Committee reports of anyone. We're done with that. New business for future meeting. We're good. Nothing on correspondence. Uh... Nothing on unfinished business. The official plan meeting is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Everyone is aware of that. Okay. And we'll be in attendance with that. 
I would like to go now to section 14 and do the bylaws, and then we'll come back to our closed session if that's all right. So under section 14, the flag lowering policy bylaw. Uh, if it's okay to go around, it would be moved by Councillor Vanstone, seconded by Councillor Snowblin, that leave be given to introduce bylaw number 53-2021, being a bylaw to adopt a flag lowering policy for the township of Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh, and then now will be read severally a first, second, and third time, and finally pass this 10th day of August, 2021. All in favor of the motion. That is carried, thank you. Lead hand, Larry Brindley, appointment of a bylaw, moved by Councillor Miltenberg, seconded by Councillor Forrester. The leave be given to introduce bylaw number 54-2021, being a bylaw to appoint the position of lead hand to Larry Brindley, and then now be read severally a first, second, and third time, and finally pass this 10th day of August of uh, August 2021. All in favor of the motion. That is carried. Congratulations to Larry. Uh, the ICIP grant agreement authorizing bylaw moved by Councillor Fisher, seconded by Councillor Forrester, that leave be given to introduce bylaw number 55-2021, being a bylaw to authorize the agreement between Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Ontario as represented by the Minister of Infrastructure in the Township of Ashfield, Colburn, Wallenosh, and then it now be read severally, a first, second, and third time, and finally pass this 10th day of August, 2021. All in favor of the motion. That's carried. Uh, CAO, please. Yeah, uh, we'll defer the next one, 14-4. It's been deferred. You're all over it. Perfect. Uh, so now let's go back to our closed session, if we could, please. And that would be to 13.0, uh, and I would entertain a mover and a seconder to move in camera, please. Moved by Councillor Forrester, seconded by Councillor Snowblum, that Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh Township Council move into an in-camera session with the CAO slash Deputy Clerk and the Clerk remaining in attendance at 10.49 a.m. for the purpose of discussing matters of litigation, including matters before a tribunal, and secondly, labor relations or employee negotiations. Ne negotiations. All in favor of the motion, please. And that is carried. Thank you. I would now uh, ask uh, our uh, her uh, coordinator, uh, Caitlin, to if you would please uh, secure the meeting for members of council and our CAO and clerk, please, and let us know when that is done, and then we'll proceed. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Okay, I would ask members of the public to remove themselves from the meeting at this time, please. 